This is a Gilbert kitchen clock that we'll be working on. It's very similar to an Ansonia and a Sessions. They're all quite easily obtainable. You can find them quite easily around the place. They were initially made in um, 1900 to 1920. So they're about 100 years old. They were designed to last five or six years and were about $2.50 or something, I think, at about that time. Here we are 100 years later, still working on them. So the first thing we do before we... The gong works. The first thing we do before we can do any work on a clock is we have to remove the hands. And we'll notice here that there's a brass pin, tapered pin, that holds the hands on. I'll take that out first. Then there's a brass washer below that. Take that off also. And the minute hand should come off easily. Just sitting on top. You'll notice there's a square hole in it that fits over the minute arbor. And we'll look into that further as we go on. Now we remove the hour hand by putting a fingernail underneath it and lifting it up. The hour hand is kept on by friction, so it's very easy to remove. We'll put that aside. Now we remove the dial. There's two screws, one here, one there. So we'll undo those screws. Put them aside. Do the second one. That's done. Now we can remove the face. And there's the movement down inside the case. That's the original pendulum that came with the clock. And just as a note, you never move a clock anywhere at all. If the pendulum's still attached, it'll quite likely bend teeth on the escape wheel so you always remove it. Now next step is we're going to remove the movement. In this instance we can probably use a small screwdriver to fit in there but the blade on the screwdriver isn't long enough. We need a slightly longer one to fit correctly into the slot on the screw. So. I'll undo the first two. Screwdriver is obviously magnetized. And then up to the top here, we've got two more screws. One there. This is where the long shaft of screwdriver comes in handy to be able to get in to the case there. I think that's undone. If we can, not a lot of room in there to move around. All right, I'll undo the next one. That's loose, and that one should be. All right, now we'll lift the movement out of the case. And there's the movement. The front of it and the back of it. Right, I'll put that aside for the moment. Pick up the other two screws that held the movement in, put them aside. We'll keep them together so we don't lose them. Now we'll remove the case. We won't worry about taking the gong out, we'll let that stay there. First thing we do before we take a movement apart is we check it to see if there's any obvious problems with it. To do that, we put the minute hand back on the, the movement, turn it round to the half hour, That wheel is obviously out. 
we'll fix that when it comes round. Now we'll turn it up to the hour. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and should drop into that deep hole there. Ten. All right. It looks like that movement is possibly working all right. So that's the first thing we do. You can also have a look and see at the looking at the pivots to see if any of them are quite loose they don't look to be too bad we'll check those once we get into it further we now have to contain the the power in the springs which we do with a let down tool and a set of mainspring clamps. However, before we do that, because you're new at this, it's very good to take some photos to see where the actual wheels are positioned within the plates to make it easier for you to put them back on in the correct position. However, there's another way that you can do that that is just as good. That's the great wheel, first wheel, second wheel, the third wheel is there and that is the fourth wheel also called the escape wheel now there's a way to record this information for you later on so we've got four wheels including the great wheel so I shall write down T4 T3, T2, T1, and the great wheel. Then you look and see how they're set up between the plates. Now the great wheel has obviously got the teeth on the top. That piece there is called an arbor. The teeth run around the top and the the mainspring is underneath it. So how we draw that, that's the arbor, that's the wheel running across there and a big block underneath it with a cross on it is the mainspring. Then we look at T1 which is that wheel there once again it has an arbor the teeth are up the top on the wheel and that's a wheel running across there this piece down here is called a pinion and that is drawn with a small square underneath Right, now we look at the second wheel, this one here. We draw the arbor. Then at the top this time, we have the pinion, the little box there, and the wheel is down at the bottom. That's the second wheel. Next one is the third wheel that wheel there and what we've got there is the arbor the wheel is down the bottom and below that is the pinion then the fourth wheel the escape wheel that one there we've got an arbor We've got a pinion down the bottom, and then we've got the wheel up at the top.
So that's what that looks like. I'll draw a line up the centre of the page. Then we'll turn the movement over. We'll have a look at the other side. That's the going wheel, the first wheel, the second wheel, that's the second wheel in there, also called the maintenance cam, the third wheel, the warning wheel here, and the fourth wheel as such is the fly. So we, will, we can draw all those again. And this is on the strike side. So we've got S4, S3, S2, S1, and the great wheel. Great wheel first. We've got the arbor. We've got a big block underneath with an X on it that represents the mainspring. Then we've got the wheel on it. And above that, we've got the count wheel. Then we look at the next wheel, the first wheel, that one there. As usual, draw the arbor first. Then the wheel's up at the top. And below that, we have a pinion. Now the second wheel, which is that one there. We've got an arbor. We've got our wheel down here. That's our, that's part of the maintenance cam there. Those two pins work the hammer for the gong. And then up at the top, We've got our pinion. Now, next wheel. Third wheel, S3, this one here, the warning wheel. We draw our arbor. And our wheel is down at the bottom. The pinion sits there. And then the fourth wheel, as such, which is the fly. We can draw that easily up here. It has a pinion down the bottom and the fly up at the top. So put that there. That's our graphic representation of where the wheels sit. If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell.